We have this club. It's not a club. Okay, well, it's not really a club. It's not a club at all. We're just some kids who live in the same neighborhood and go to the same church. But we do have a clubhouse to meet in. Yeah, us and the bugs. So it needs some fixing up sometimes. It's about to fall out of its tree. Anyway, one evening there was a big storm coming up. And we were... We means us and our friends. There's Grace and Mikey and my brother David and me, Amber. We were trying to fix the roof before it started raining. And we almost had... Ow! Ow! Oh, Obviously, there was nothing to do but go home. We really don't live very far from the treehouse, but on the way we pass this big old haunted mansion. It's not haunted. Yeah, well that's not what you thought then. So, I was riding by the mansion, and I saw some lights in an upstairs window. By the time the rest of us got there, the lights were gone. But Mikey and I wanted to see if anything else would happen. We waited a long time. It wasn't that long. It was almost dark, and I wanted to go home. And so did Grace. But no, my brother wanted to be a big, brave hero and explore. I just wanted to get a closer look. We got a closer look, all right. light in here. See if you can find a fuse box. how we met Nathan Thornridge and his parents. As it
it turned out the Thornridges inherited this big old mansion, and they were going to turn it into a bed and breakfast. So, the next day we all showed up to help. And man, did we ever work hard. Well, some of us did. Hey, I worked. And at least I didn't almost kill Mr. Thornridge. Oops. Sorry. So anyway, we were busy pulling up the old carpet when we made the first discovery. Inside the staircase was this old Indian pouch. And it was real, too. We found out it used to belong to Nathan's grandfather. Yeah, and inside was this little book. And it had directions to some kind of secret room, but they were kind of hard to read, like a mysterious code. The book said there was a secret door around the fireplace. So we all started looking. But it was Grace that discovered the secret. <laughs> After that, it was just a matter of pulling on everything until finally... Nathan's house, so we wanted him to go first, but he wanted me to go with him. Sure enough, at the bottom was this secret room. It looked like somebody had been using it for a clubhouse. Yeah, a long time ago, but there was nobody there now, unless you count the spiders. Anyway, that's how we found our secret meeting room under Nathan's house. Yeah, no more broken down tree house. Plus, we found something else. What's that? We found some new adventures. I think the adventures found us. Dreaming. Yeah. So. Well, that's a good sign. Good sign, bad sign. I think you're taking this Indian thing too far. Too far? Edward, it's what we are. Our identity. Yeah. Well, I think I'm having an identity crisis. I'm sorry you feel that way. Look, Grandpa. Mom, Dad, and I got along just fine, living in the present, just trying to be normal. I want to fit in with my friends. Huh. 
bunch of hooligans. Here we go again. Edward, ever since your mom and dad died, I've tried to do what's best for you. But things just keep getting worse and worse. And you think dragging me halfway across the country is going to fix everything? I don't know. I hope so. Uh, getting low on gas. What do you say we stop in the next little town and get a burger? There you go, Chief, and you too, little Chief. I think she needs her karma adjusted. No point in getting stirred up. Where are you going? A uh, little boy's room. Oh. Eyes. Well, where are you? I can't meet you tonight. Say what? Graham's dragged me off with him. I can't meet you tonight. No, no, no. Listen, kid, we had a deal. Deal's still on, but just not tonight. All right, all right. Have you got that spirit thing? Where is it? It's packed in the truck. Don't worry, you'll get it. When are you coming back? I think he means for us to stay a while. Yeah, well, you better let me know where you are. Yeah, sure. And Edward, don't get any bright ideas about crossing me up either. I hear you all right. But remember, I want 200 bucks. Yeah, sure. Okay, it's ready. Okay, heat big hunters, listen up. Crazy horse, him go hide, and we go track him. You savvy? Give me five minutes head start. Crazy horse, speak true. It is now 1907 hours. Countdown begins now. Okay, squaws, get ready to go hop on ponies. This is stupid. You guys just ride out and keep your communicators on. The computer should triangulate Mikey's position. Indians didn't hunt game with two-way radios and computers. Hey, if they would have had him, they would have used him. 
you say? Spread out. Send good signals to Medicine Man at computer. Okay, there he is. On Chief Signal. Now, one big tick on Sundial. Charge! Cherokee sure had a weird way of writing. We Cherokees are the only nation with a written language. <laughs> you should learn it. By the way, Edward, I think we'll stop in Somerville. A friend of mine lived there 60 years ago. Some medicine man is going to tell my fortune? <laughs> no, he's a white man. I used to scare him silly with my wildcat imitation. <laughs> Come on, you try it. No one will hear it. This is stupid. No, it's not. The old ones used to use animal and bird calls as signals. <laughs> not bad. Try it again. <laughs> Good. <laughs> You're getting it. <laughs> Okay, everybody, can you hear me? He's right ahead of you. Spread out and try to surround him. Nathan, you're breaking up. I can't understand you. What did you say? Hold on. Okay, guys, that's a lock on. Mikey, I mean, the deer is right in front of you. This is Somerville. Yeah. Home of the robots. 
robots. Mm. Is that some kind of nerdy ball team? <laughs> Unit three to base. I'm in base. Unit three to base. This is unit three calling base. Yeah? There's been an accident. A truck ran off the road. Nearly got Mikey. Call 911 quick. Are you Mr. Little Ock's grandson? Edward White Eyes. I'm Mrs. McKenzie. The doctor will be out to see you soon. You're not from around here, are you? I'm from Oklahoma. It's going to be some time before your grandfather is well enough to travel. Do you have a place to stay? I guess not. Some folks from our church just opened a bed and breakfast nearby. I'll see if they have a place. Down in the secret room. Thank you. It's a mystery. It's a project. I move we find the treasure. Yeah, and we'll all become millionaires. <laughs> Is everybody in favor of the map project? Yeah. Yes. Hi, Ellen. You must be Edward. Welcome. I'll take that. Come on in. So what are you going to do with your treasure money? I'm going to buy myself a new car. You can't even drive yet. So it doesn't matter. I'm still going to buy myself a new car. I want you all to meet Edward. Edward, this is Amber. David. Hi. Grace. Hi, Edward. Mikey. It's Michael. And our son, Nathan. Edward's going to be staying with us while his grandfather's in the hospital. I thought we were full. We are. That's why we put a rollaway bed in your room. OK, kids, time to say good night. You can come back tomorrow and get better acquainted. Nice outfits. We're Indians. Yeah, Cherokee Indians. They used to live around here. No kidding. Nathan, why don't you take Edward to your room? This is your bed. The bathroom's down the hall. Just leave my stuff alone, okay? Look, I ain't all that thrilled with having to hold up in this crummy place any more than you are with having me. Well, if you don't like it here, why don't you just leave? I might do that. I can get along by myself just fine. Fine. We don't need people like you here anyway. Hi. 
Are you any good with those? Sometimes. Can I try one? Sure. No, don't hold it that way. Put all four fingers on the string. Cherokees hold with their thumb and forefinger. I never can hit anything anyway. You were late, Amber. Sorry, I was talking to Edward. Edward? The Indian. I'd tell your sister to stay away from him if I were you. Why? Because we don't know anything about him. And besides, he's different than us. I don't know. That doesn't sound right to me. Well, don't say I didn't warn you. Now, what about this map? Yeah, we gotta figure out what these words are. Babbling brook, spotted fawn, go to room with heap many talking books. Oh, the library! Grandfather, it's me, Edward. Natty. Natty. You old Bible-toting sight for sore eyes. Oh, don't you remember old Wildcat? Grandfather, who's Natty? Right there, boy. Can't you see? Excuse me. Could you tell us what language this is? What are you doing? I'm not hurting anything. Give it to me. Oh, oh what a sweet ill puppy dog. Give it back. Look, if you're going to stay in my room, you have to abide by my rules. And the first one is no messing with my stuff. Yeah, whatever. Break time, Sid. Oh, I want to finish this off. Bring me a soda, will you? Okay. Spotted fawn, go see if coast's clear. Who, me? Some scout. Lay off, David. 
Let a real Indian show you how it's done. Hey. <clears throat> hey, Sid. Yeah? Come here a minute. That was close. Get it. Some of these letters look like Greek. Yeah, and some of them look like English too. But they're not. What do you think, Kimosabi? What do we think about what? Chief have new necklace. Nice, David. Chief also say mother finished new teepee. So what? Chief think maybe we can use for headquarters while painters work. Now that's the first sensible thing you said all day. I am not sleeping in that thing. TP not done yet. You think you can fix it? No, but I bet Edward can. Why don't you go ask him? No, I don't think so. Come on, let's go get him. That was my grandpa's. Give it back. You guys having some teepee trouble? 
That's not funny. Instead of laughing at us, you could try to help. <laughs> Me? You're the expert. I've never set up a teepee in my life. Storms likely and low around 60. Chance of rain is near 100%. Good doggy, good food. Some genuine Indian style grub. Beef turkey. Yeah. Mm. Chiefs say Indian life heat good. Uh, we know what you say. I wish Edward would have slept out here. Maybe he could tell us a good Indian ghost story. Oh, forget about him. Just keep thinking about this treasure. Just waiting to be found. What's he doing? I don't believe it. He's doing a rain dance. And it's working. Highly illogical. Rain is caused by a low atmospheric pressure in combination
Oh, hi guys. What's the matter? You! You're the matter! What did I do? A rain dance, that's what. I just called a little, uh, music for sleeping in a teepee. You didn't like it? I hate it! I hate feathers. I hate war paint. I hate teepees. And I hate Indians. Nathan! Especially smart Alec Cherokees who can't keep their hands off of people's stuff. You don't know anything about Cherokees. They don't ride ponies, they don't live in teepees, and they don't have war bonnets. They didn't? Be quiet. I suppose they don't do rain dances either. For your information, that was a rabbit dance. What's all the commotion about? Nothing a good swift kick in the Tonto wouldn't fix. Nathan, I'm surprised at you. Edward is our guest. Well, he's not my guest. We'll talk about that later. You get some dry things for these boys and get to bed. then it's not his fault. You look stronger. Oh, maybe a little. Uh, Grandpa, I need some help. Oh? I found some Cherokee writing. Could you tell me what it means? Well, let me see. Well, now, this here, that means tree. And this is rock. What does this mean? Uh, that's cave. And this is wildcat. Why this sudden interest in Cherokee? Good morning, Mr. Little Elk. Time for a blood pressure. Okay. Are you Edward? Uh, yes. Your Uncle Rayford called. Uncle Rayford? Yeah. It's just this guy I know. What do you want? He was just checking on your grandpa. That's all for now. Thank you. What was that all about, grandson? Oh, not, nothing important. Grandpa, can you tell me about your spirit bundle? Oh, what about it? Like, what's in it? I never opened it. Might have some feathers, rocks, scraps of fur, uh, bones maybe. Just things that my grandfather thought had great spiritual power. You mean it's full of junk? A collector once offered me $10,000 for it. $10,000? It's worth more than that to me. Why, selling that bundle would be like disowning my whole family. You don't believe in that spirit stuff, do you? No, <laughs> not really. But it's part of our heritage. Whoa. Look who's getting all duded up. I'm going to church. You don't want to come, do you? Who, me? No thanks. No way! I didn't think so.
Nathan, you invite Edward? Uh-huh. He didn't want to come. I'm glad you boys buried the hatchet. Roger. Kid. Rayford, how'd you find me? You know, I love hospital personnel. They are so helpful. I, I was I was gonna call. Mm-hmm. Right. Now I'm on my way over there, see? And you are gonna sell me that bundle. Like they say in the movies. I know where you live. You got that? So you can see from the events of Acts 23 that God is sovereign. That means God uses circumstances. God controls circumstances to accomplish his will. Just like Paul's nephew arrived in Jerusalem in the nick of time to prevent Paul's murder, so people sometimes show up in our lives because of God's divine purpose. It might be a relative, like in Paul's case. Or it could be a total stranger, someone new who comes into your life for no apparent reason. Like an Indian, right? It may be somebody God plops down right beside you, not to help you, but so you can help them and tell them about Jesus. Like Edward. What if they're different? like from a totally different background. What difference would that make? Well, maybe it would be better if they heard, you know, the gospel from somebody else. I mean, from somebody that understands them better. Sometimes, we're too selfish to see God's purpose behind the people he sends our way. Maybe we're afraid of getting involved with someone we don't like. But that doesn't change the fact that we're God's tools, the people he has chosen to help others and to tell them the good news of the gospel. Edward. He cleared all his stuff out. Excuse me. What about dinner, Nathan? It's important. 
I'll be back soon. Mr. Luloak? I'm Nathan Thornridge. Oh, come in, Nathan. There's something I have to tell you. Oh. It's about Edward. He's run away. When did he leave? This morning. We were at church. Do you know why? I don't... Well, I guess it's probably because of me. I acted like a brat. I got mad at him for messing with some of my stuff. And I even said that... that I hated Indians. Just hear what my grandpa would say if he found out what I did. Ever heard of a club called the Robots? Yeah. So that's why you called me Natty. Mm -hmm. You're Wildcat. One and the same. Natty and I were the best of friends. He sort of looked out for me like, a, like an older brother because I was different and the kids liked to pick on me. He told me about that. Edwards had a pretty rough time of it, too. He used to live with his folks in Oklahoma City. They both worked at the Federal Building. And, well, you know what happened. Wow. And then he came to live with me. I tried to help him get past all that. Figured if he got interested in his heritage, he'd come round. So I taught him ceremonies and dances and trapping, and shooting bow and arrows. He's not very good, is he? <laughs> no. Then when that didn't work, I decided to bring him east. On the way, I thought about old Natty, how he always prayed and talked about his Lord. And I figured, well, Maybe that's what Edward needs. What about you, sir? Grandpa told you about Jesus. I know he did. Well, Natty and I sort of lost track of each other. And I guess I forgot about all that. Till now. Have you trusted Christ yet? You're a lot like your grandpa. I'm sorry about Edward. I was just too busy thinking about myself. Should have tried to help. Don't be too hard on yourself, son. Edward had gone far. He'll come around and you'll get a chance to make it up to him. I know you will. Robots. 
home of the robot. It's hopeless. Crazy horse speak with forked tongue. Nothing ever hopeless. All right then, Chief. You show us how to put the ink back where it was. Let me see. What do you see, Squaw? Oh, knock it off. Can I see your pocket knife, Nathan? Sure. Careful, it's sharp. You're a genius. Thanks, but I got it from a book. The graphite fills in the scratches made by a pen point. But there's something about this writing. What about it? The librarian helped us find every possible type of writing. All except for one. Come on. <laughs> Nathan Thornridge, what are you doing? What's your mother going to say? Look, it's Cherokee writing. Well, I guess it's time to hit the library again. book on Cherokee in the library. I found rock, tree, and house, but we don't know whose house. Probably yours because the map came from your house. I found some numbers in here too. One was 14 something and the other one was 22, but I don't know if it was feet or meters. I wish Edward could help us. Edward's gone. Maybe we could try calling him on the radio. My radio has been missing ever since. Ever since what? That's it. Edward's got my radio. It was in the pouch. If Edward has your radio, do you think we could call him? I don't know. We can try. Later, after the painters leave. <laughs> Let's hope his battery is still good. Nathan Thundercloud calling Edward White Eyes. Come in, Edward. Yeah, what do you want? It's him. It's Edward. Where are you? Can't you just leave me alone? Look, we need your help. No. Why not? Don't ask stupid questions. Edward? Uh, I'm sorry I was such a jerk. We really need your help. We're trying to figure out this map. We know the writing's Cherokee, but we can't find all the words. You do know Cherokee, don't you? Ha, huh. do I know Cherokee? Can't we meet somewhere? Please? No.
May I help you? Uh, yes, I'm looking for a kid named White Eyes. He's an Indian. You seen him? Yes, he was here. When do you expect him back? I don't know. He left last Sunday. He left? That's right. We filed a missing persons report. Why, that little... Just a moment. Roger, there's a man at the door looking for Edward. Really? He gives me the creeps. Maybe you better talk to him. Someone looking for Edward. What's up, Nathan? I still can't figure out this map. I thought it would be easy once we got the Cherokee letters. What's the problem? I can't find anything. We know where the house is, that's easy. But there's supposed to be an oak tree somewhere here and I don't see it. What about those? According to the map, it's not in the woods, it's in the yard. So it ought to be about right here. If you find the tree, then what? We know from the map how far it is to the treasure. So if we find the tree, all we have to do is measure it out. What does an oak tree look like? I'm not really sure. I bet Edward could help us. Yeah, I wish he were here. So do I. Maybe we can find him with the radio. Yeah, like we found Mikey the deer. You three do the tracking. Come on, Mikey. Could you excuse us? We need to use this room. Boys, we got work to do. Just two minutes, please. Kids, times. Oh. All right, same deal as last time. Check your radios. Body find here. Babbling Brook, check. Black Elf, present and accounted for. Good news. I think Edward's got his radio on. Hey, way to go, guys. You're right on top of him. How'd you find him so fast? Uh, Nathan, we haven't left yet. What? Where are you? Here, in your yard. We didn't go anywhere. Your yard? Something gone haywire. About a big black car looking for Edward. 10 4, Gracie. Well, he's cruising your house again. 
This is Nathan Thundercloud. Man, I gotta get something to eat. Think he can hear you? We've got to keep trying. This is Nathan Thundercloud calling over the White Eyes. Thundercloud the White Eyes. There's a guy in a big black car. Talk louder, maybe his battery is low. Edward, come in. This is important. Look, Edward, if you're in some kind of trouble, we want to help. Come in, please. We want to help. the stump.
oak tree. Edward? Nathan. Could you get off of me, please? Oh. Why did you do that? I thought you were Rayford. The guy in the black car? Yeah. Follow me. Hey, kid, white eyes. You in there? He must have followed me. Here for that bundle. Where is the bundle? It's in my gym bag. He took my bag. Bundle's gone too. We aren't gonna let him get away, are we? 
blitz around them. All right, Rayford, hold it right there. Take it easy, boys. Somebody's gonna get hurt, and it ain't gonna be me. You can't get away, Rayford. Watch it, kid! So this is what the map was for. The treasure was a new way into the secret room. You okay? Yeah. No problem. Edward, I'm sorry about the way I've been treating you. I'm used to it. Yeah, I'll bet you are. But the point is, I'm a Christian. And Christians aren't supposed to treat somebody bad just because they're... Different? Yeah. Well, you're the first person who ever said you were sorry about it. So what do we do now? We call 911. I'd like to report an attempted robbery.
wish we could be there when they catch him. Yeah, that'd be cool. Come on, let's go see him. How you doing? You lousy, stinking little weasel. Where's the bag, huh? I said, where's the bag? Tell me where it is, or so help me, I'll break your scrawny little neck. <laughs> You did that? Yeah, I believe it. <laughs> Way to go, Chief! Yes! 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 yes. And Grandpa, it really worked. I'm real proud of both of you. You should have seen Rayford hanging from his ankles. <laughs> Turns out. He's wanted for possession of contraband Indian relics and armed robbery. I'm just sorry Natty wasn't here to welcome you home. Well, I'll be seeing him again someday, thanks to his grandson. Uh, young man, that reminds me. I've got something pretty important to discuss with you. You mean about accepting Christ? Yeah. I think I'm ready for it, thanks to Nathan. I mean, well, whatever Nathan has, I guess I want it too. Uh, Edward, uh, don't you have something for young Natty? Oh, yes, sir. Aya, Donata. Aya, Donetta, Quado. Aya, Donata, Quado. Aya. Awa. Awasa. Yeah. It means I give you a name. Lone Wolf. I don't deserve this. Thanks. I have something for Edward, too. Mm. It's Delaware, not Cherokee. But that's fine. My father was Delaware. It means a lot to me. Look inside. We made you a certificate. It says you're the first official honorary member of our club. Is our old meeting place still there? Yeah, Grandpa, it's cool. They have a computer and a high-powered communication system. Hmm. Remember, you'll always have a place in our secret meeting room. Edward, as far as I'm concerned, the most important thing you did was find that new entrance. Now you kids can meet and not track dirt all through my clean house. <laughs>